the age of the baseball player is going up, the batting average goes down. Now note that this correlation is pretty not significant, but it is downward sloping correlation. Also note that we probably would think about this the other way around. If I was making a hypothesis, I would probably put the X as the age, indicating where we normally put the independent variable, which is causing the batting averages to go down. That would be my hypothesis that I would be putting in my head. But if I reverse these two this way, we would still end up with a negative correlation. So whichever variable we put on either axis, if there's a negative correlation, it'll still be negative. And if it's a positive correlation, it'll still be positive. But by tradition, we'll typically put the independent or what we think is the causal factor on the X. Okay, correlation coefficient, we usually represent it with an R. Here's the formula for it. When we think about the formula, it looks complex, but given some of the sections we have seen in the past, it's not really that difficult. We have two different data sets right now. And in prior sections, we talked about the, the Z-score in prior calculations. That's going to take in one data set each point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. That's like the Z-score. We do the second for the second data set. We do the same thing. Each point minus its mean divided by its standard de deviation for a sample. And then we divide by N, which is the count of data sets that we have in this case, n minus one with that added factor we typically have for like sample calculations that we've seen uh, in prior presentations. So like, what's this mathematical calculation going to do? It's going to give us a range from negative one to plus one. So when we think about this correlation, we saw it pictorially uh, in the prior presentation. We can also rep represent it mathematically with this calculation, giving us a result from negative one to positive one. Now, if it was exactly negative one, which isn't likely to happen most of the time, but if it was in that extreme example, it indicates a perfect negative correlation. So we'll do an example of this just to show the extreme when we do our practice problems. And one example would be say the distance traveled versus the distance remaining. So if you're going on a trip that is 100 miles and you travel 20 miles, then it would go from 100 down to 80, right? And if you went to 40 miles that you traveled, then the distance that's remaining would be 60, right? And if you went uh, 60 miles, the distance remaining would be 40. And so you can see how you have that negative kind of correlation. Now, now in that case, you would, again, think of the distance traveled normally as the independent variable, but you, you could flip them. You could think of the distance remaining and, and say, well, uh, and, and, and look at it that, you know, look at it that way, you would still get a downward sloping line. But obviously